So many thanks for watching this first video for my trip to Morocco. So this is my first time in Africa and anywhere remotely off the grid, uh, such as the walk I did. For me, I'd spent quite some time walking within Europe, mainly within the UK and down to Spain and France and Germany. But I was really looking for something a little bit left field. Um, and as I said off the grid Morocco is perfect arriving in Morocco in Marrakesh was the f for me the first major hurdle was losing my drone to customs as I didn't realize that drones weren't allowed to be brought into the country and in hindsight I should have researched it a bit better the drive down from Marrakesh airport to the Anti-Atlas mountains where I was hiking was about four to five hours so a good long track but the roads are very good payage system very much like France but once onto the minor roads and B roads you've got to be really careful as people tend to walk out into the middle of the road in the middle of the villages and definitely pedestrians are king and seemingly pedestrians take priority over cars which was something that I needed to get used to very quickly so I spent the first part of my time in Morocco down in a place called Tafrut which is actually situated within the anti-Atlas mountains so not within the Atlas mountains of Morocco which are more northeast of the country um, the anti-Atlas are nice because they're more of a compact area uh, something that's I think probably more easily navigated certainly for a first timer like me Tafrut say well known base camp or mecca for climbers and bouldering uh, walkers hikers and runners it's a very temperate climate and essentially is surrounded by mountain ridges and a real playground for any elevation so for me uh, as i said before it was quite a different look and feel to any other hike i've done before and needed to make sure that I was well prepared for the hikes just because of the conditions uh, it's so hot and dry water is harder to come by uh, just because once you're out in the wilderness and out in the remote parts of the country it's, it, you don't have uh, access to mineral water also a lot of the fonts that previously provided water have now dried up so my hike started in Tafrut and went out past the Marak Telecom shop out through to a place called Tazka and past the ancient Berber house which is actually a museum run by uh, some local people and essentially relies on donations um, later that day a uh, day after actually I went and visited it's amazing because it was 30 35 degrees outside and actually inside the house because of the mud and stone composite walls the the uh, walls were ice cold so a real fantastic environment for living during the tour of the house actually the next day um, the guide took us into a canyon and we saw this very ancient rock art that was carved onto a boulder in the canyon is actually a mouflon or a sheep but is colloquially known as the tezekas gazelle because it looks like a gazelle as mentioned during the map segment, I walked out through the, the Blue Rocks Valley and through to the Roche Pint or the Painted Stones. So these blue rocks are a real bizarre and unusual feature on the landscape. And actually the history is it was back in 1984, I think a Belgian artist decided to uh, commission the local fire service in Tafrut, if I'm right, and they painted the rocks with about 18 tons of paint. Um, it's not to everyone's taste and certainly it's quite a Marmite feature on the landscape. I think some people appreciate it. Some people think it's an eyesore or an act of pure and utter vandalism. 
Uh, for me, I thought it was quite cool, actually. And um, as you can see from the film, I spent a lot of time milling around. Once through the valley, um, I took the 8 Mansour Road along through to a village called Ayed. And it was a good couple of hours of ascent along some of the mountain paths and roads. And just mainly due to the heat, um, it was quite a long afternoon. And by the time I got to early evening, I hit the ridge line of the mountains that continues to one of the summits called Hadra Mukorn, I think it's pronounced. But I decided to camp there. It was such a stunning spot and provided a really spectacular vista of the, the changing climactic conditions as the evening and night wore on. So actually the conditions did become quite overcast uh, during the night, but actually there was something quite atmospheric and ambient about it. And it was almost shrouded in mist. And as you can see, nice to have a fire um, an open fire always warms the soul and is especially lovely when you're out on your own and you miss your loved ones and um, I thought it was fantastic not much in the way of opportunities for any astrophotography that night um, but some good time lapses the next day just headed back really followed the same route and got through to the painted rocks and a nice little scramble and hop through the valley back to base camp. Anyway, please have a look at the uh, route on all trails and many thanks for watching the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, provides a bit of inspiration and hopefully some relaxation and spirituality for everybody. Uh, if you like, please continue watching the other videos and uh, we've got the second video coming out to this in a week or two uh, with more of the same. Uh, so you take care thank you for watching so my hike was located in morocco which is on the west northwest coast of africa so to get to the base camp of tafru which is about here i flew to marrakesh and then drove across country which is about five hours down to the anti-atlas mountains which is here these are the atlas mountains across the top here which are I guess more commonly visited so the roads down from Marrakesh are mainly sort of French type payage until you reach uh, this area here which is Eight Baha where you start crossing over onto A and B roads um, and you have to be very careful driving through the villages had lots of people milling around children animals etc once you get to Ait Baha, you have this long traverse of the mountain range by car, which is extremely exciting. And you come down into Tafru, which is here. Um, as I said, Tafru is like a mecca or central centrality for outdoor pursuits, whether you're mountain climbing or bouldering or running or hiking or whatever you're doing. Uh, it's a really fantastic center and has everything you need uh, so my walk started in the middle of Tafru and you come out by Marak Telecom and you follow this path and road that goes all the way through uh, through a place called Tazka um, and this is where I passed the Berber house uh, with the rock art painting come through the Blue Rock Valley um, all the way through until you hit this part here which is the Painted Rocks area. As you can see from the map that's about halfway and that's about between 5 and 10k. Um, once you come through the Painted Rocks you pass through and you cross over the Ape Mansour Road and this part here represents a long ascent by road about thousand meters of climbing um, passing through a couple of small villages and also lots of Berber localities with sheep farming at about this point here you come off the road and there's a very thready path with difficult signposting as you head up the mountain onto the ridge onto the Adquamokorn Ridge and this was my first night camping. Um, as you can see here, there was something that happened whereby I started traversing up a long gorge, but it was really not great. And the climbing was really difficult with the large rucksack. So I turned around about here 
headed up and found myself a really good campsite, camp spot up on the mountain with a fantastic view of the valley ahead. So in 3D you can see the change in profile as you come through the painted rocks and this is the traverse over the mountain route um, and the camp spot was at about 1050, 1700 meters. Uh, the whole route was around about 15 miles uh, so there and back 30 miles and just follow my way back the next day.